Hello and welcome back to another video. In this video we're going to be showing you how to make bus or group channels on FL Studio. I'm going to start by quickly showing you how to do this and then at the end of the video I'm going to talk about why you might want to do this and what sort of control this gives you in the context of a mix. So let's get straight into it. So I'm going to be demonstrating this on a group of drums, but this could apply to anything. It could be keys, synths, bass. We're just going to group all of the drums together onto one channel. So currently we have a kick, uh, the top of the kick, a bottom of the kick, sort of like the low end, a snare, and then some shakers. And they're all being sent to different channels on the mixer, as you can see here, this group in the red. And the purpose of the bus channel is to group them together so that I can control them all on one channel. The first thing to notice is that on each channel, there's this little green line that comes down and it goes down from the channel and then out to the master, which is this blue channel here. So what I'd like to do is have this line go to a bus channel instead. So on any insert, I can just uh, find a new one or drag one over from the side. I'm just going to rename it drum bus. And I'm also going to color it the same color as the drums. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select each channel where the drums are. So the kick top is going to be the first one I use. And I'm going to go down to this little, this little arrow here. And I'm going to right click and select route to this track only. And I'm going to repeat this for all of them. So I'm going to go to the kick bottom. I'm going to go to this arrow here on the drum bus. And I'm going to select route to this track only. And then I'm just going to do the same for the other tracks. Now what's happening is that the audio from these uh, kicks and snares and shakers is being sent to this drum bus and then the drum bus is being sent to the master. So to simplify this in another uh, term, you could view all of these individual channels as like little streams of audio and then all the streams join into the drum bus, which is like a river. So all the streams kind of join into a river and then your various bus buses, whether that's a drum bus, an instrument bus, a bass bus, those will all go into the master, which you could view as like the sea, for instance. So you've got the little streams of audio, they all go to these buses and then the buses feed out to the master. The reason we selected route to this track only was so that they didn't feed their audio to the master and to the drum bus, because now when we press play, lowering the volume of the drum bus will lower the volume of all the drums together. So that's pretty much how to do it in FL Studio and it is really simple. The only pitfalls to avoid is making sure that when you when you send it you do select route to this track only. If you didn't, I'll show you what would happen. So if I sent the kick to the drum bus just by pressing route to this track but also sent it to the master it would mean that if I were to lower the volume of the drum bus, the kick would still get through. And we don't want that. So that's how to do it, but I said I would explain why you might want to do this in case you've never heard of this before. It's quite common uh, for mixing engineers to do this with the whole mix. You would have maybe a drum bus, you would have an instrument bus, potentially like keys or acoustics or bass. And it just means that you can do sort of top down mixing. So you can start with the buses. And if the drums are all too loud, you can just pull the whole bus down. If the bass bus just overall has uh, too little bass in it, instead of going to each individual track, you can just go to the bus, potentially put an EQ and raise the low end of it so that it kind of fits more in the context of the mix. So it can save you time because you don't have to dive into each little instrument right away. And often just doing some bus processing is enough if your samples and recordings were done very, very well. The next thing it lets you do, and this is sort of more where I'm interested in, is it gives you a lot of control and flexibility. It takes a little bit of time to set up. As you see, you have to spend some time sending them all to the right channels. But once it's set up, it sort of expands your options. If you want to do like a filter sweep on the drums, you only have to do it once on the drum bus. And if you want to apply any sort of effect just to your drums, it's very easy to do so. So I'm going to demonstrate something just here. I'm going to pull over an insert. I'm going to call it, I'm going to call it drum reverb. And on this channel, what I'm going to do is just add a reverb and I'm going to use Verb Suite Classics. I'm going to choose a drum room, realistic drum room. Haven't actually listened to this one yet. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to send signal from the drum bus to this drum reverb. So I'm going to go uh, route to this track. And then I'm going to take the volume all the way down. And this would be applying reverb to the entire drum. So instead of just applying reverb just to the snare or to the kick or to the shakers, you can apply reverb to the whole drums uh, and make them feel more like a real drum kit, put them into a good room, give them a bit of presence or something like that. And this is just one example. So I'm also going to put it through a little bit of EQ 
because I know that the low end of this is going to become a bit crazy and I'm also going to compress it. So let's take a listen to this. So I'll just play it around. So then you could just fade in a reverb channel like that, and that's something that we sometimes do just to give all the drums a little bit of presence. So I'm going to mute that because it was just sort of an example. On the drum bus, if I chose uh, an EQ, and I'm just going to use Fruity Parametric EQ2, just because everybody's got that one. Say I want to do a filter sweep. I'm going to select the high band. I'm just going to quickly change it to a low pass. And then over here, I'm just going to create an automation clip for this. And say I want to filter the drums up slowly. Say say there was you wanted to keep maybe maybe you had the piano and you wanted to keep the piano full, you wanted to keep the vocal full, but you wanted the drums to be filtering up from underneath the track. Instead of creating a filter sweep on each individual track, or on all of the instruments, or on the master, you can just do it just on the drums. So it sounds a little bit silly on its own, but this would obviously be in the context of a mix. The reason I thought of uh, showing this was because it's something that we do in all of our mixes, but I haven't actually uh, talked through or shown why we do it. If someone were to send us a multi-track session, this is usually the first thing we do. I usually identify the instruments into a few broad categories, like I said, drums, synths, basses, uh, stuff like that. And then I'll send them all to their main, uh, main buses and then I apply processing directly on the bus and it means that you can get the mix a lot closer to a good position than if you were to just solo in on the kick or just solo in on the snare or just the sub bass. It means that it gives you like a good context for where things are. Like if the bass is just too loud, you could pull the whole thing down or apply some EQ just there. If all the drums are just too dark and they need brightening up, you could apply an EQ to the whole drum bus. Also, uh, lots of other techniques that you might have heard of, such as like parallel compression on drum bus. If you actually create a drum bus, you can use techniques like that. Whereas if you don't, you're left having to compress each of the channels individually, and that's going to use a lot more VSTs and a lot more processing power in the end. If you apply the processing mainly just on the bus channel, you're going to save yourself a lot of VSTs, and your computer is probably going to cope an awful lot better. Sometimes having these bus channels helps you keep a context for where the actual energy in a mix lies and where it should lie, and it lets you sort of make big changes a little bit easier. If, for instance, you were towards the end of the mix and you just thought that actually all the drums are just a bit too quiet in the chorus, instead of automating the kick, the snare, and the shakers all up in the chorus, you could just take a little automation on the main bus and just put the whole bus up by a dB or 2 dB in the chorus. It just saves you an awful lot of time like that. So hopefully that simplified that topic for you and you'll be able to start using buses in your mixes. I hope I've made a good case for using them. I do just think that they simplify everything, they make it a lot easier, and I can't believe I haven't actually shown how to do that until now. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video.